This is Paul Anderson again with a, another video tutorial for Logger Pro. Um, on this one, we are actually going to be analyzing a kick that was taken with a high speed camera. So we're going to actually have to do some uh, resets with Logger Pro when we insert our movie. So, first thing again, we open Logger Pro, we insert our movie. My video has been downloaded on the desktop. And here's my kick, and so I'm going to open that up. And you can see that the quality of this one's going to be less, but that's because my high speed camera loses resolution as we go through. Uh, I am going to have to kind of queue up the kick a little bit. So we want to get right to the point to where the foot's starting to come in. Um, and this is going to take a while. And, all right, I'm just going to back up a couple of frames. So there we're at a point right before the foot touches the ball. If I advance one frame forward, okay, two frames forward, you can see the foot's actually touching the ball. So we're going to start right at this point. Um, I'm going to go turn on my tools, and I'm going to start doing some plotting of my points. And again, I'm going to pick a spot on the ball that I always want to keep. I'm going to keep the leading edge of the ball right down here. So I'm going to have some points. In place. You can see that the kick actually raised it off the ground just a little bit. Uh, one filming note, you can see that a better contrast would actually help with being able to see the defined edge of the ball. So if you can actually um, have, you know, say a white ball with a dark background or vice versa, it will help you in being able to pick up the points. Um, you probably noticed that when we did the uh, ball toss analysis, that one, the ball blurred a lot more because of the uh, motion and how fast it was moving. Or this one will be a little cleaner for us due to the high speed of the camera. Okay, so we've got quite a few points now after the kick has actually happened. I'm just going to back up again here to the points of where the foot first left the ball. So we're going to come back here to our very beginning. And we're going to make a couple of notes to ourselves. This happened to be frame number 527 of 749. So you can see that this is a lot of frames. And then if I go through, I start to count the number of frames in which the ball was in contact with the foot. And there we can definitely see that the foot is no longer touching the ball. Okay, I think I'll go with that frame right there. And so there's our 543, 43rd frame. And so the difference between those number of frames tells us exactly how many frames we have. And then we have to define the time for the program. So we're going to go under our options and down to movie options again. We'll again set that first VA point to define time equals zero. And now we're going to override our frame rate. Um, if I remember correctly, this was actually taken at 320 frames a second. So every frame represents one, one, or one 320th of a second. So the number of frames that we had times that number or fractional part of a second will give us our time in contact. And that's needed when we actually do the impulse part of this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to set my scale. So again, I'm going to try to pick that first point for my scale. And then I got to, or uh, for my origin, and set the scale for the ball. And this one, it's pretty easy for me to just take and measure the uh, diameter of the ball. And I think the diameter of the ball is about um, 25 centimeters. So I'm going to go to 25 and then I'm going to put um, or 0.25 meters. Say OK. And then we'll hit our auto arrange once more. 
So we'll go to page, down to auto arrange, and then we can look at our graph. Now again, our Y information is not going to be as uh, important to us. It's going to be the X one that's going to be more important to us than this one. And so you can see here's that first, I'm just going to turn on my examine. Okay, my first amount here, this is when the foot first came in contact. I can go along here with this until I get to that point of where I'm at, that 540, let's see, where am I at here? About 547 frame. Yep, nope. or it was 37. So this is about the amount of time that it took for the impulse to occur. So again, that's the time that I was actually adding that force. And you can see that up there in my examine box, it's 0 0.04375 seconds. Um, and so that's the amount of time that we worked through there. Now, if I do that slope tool again, okay, and do the linear fit, I'm going to highlight some points out here beyond. This should give me kind of a good idea of what my speed was after the ball left my foot. Okay, so now I have the ball leaving my foot. That'll give me my speed if I know the mass of the ball. I know the momentum of the ball. I know the amount of time in contact. So now I know my force. So how much force did I apply? Now the second way to kind of look at this would to be a to do a curve fit of the other range. So if I take my range back here of where my foot's in contact, and I do a curve fit of this, and I select again kind of that power or that quadratic function, and we can try that fit to see how it works. And say OK. That curve fit will actually give me um, an A value, the A value representing that acceleration. So again, it's that uh, my kinematic relationship B equals uh, one half A T squared plus V I T plus um, my original position. My original position should have come out to be fairly close to zero. Um, you can see that the curve fits not quite as good as what I'd like it to be, um, but you can definitely see that we have some acceleration present in that curve. Uh, maybe if we kind of tighten this up a little bit, we can make our curve look a little better. Okay. And now if I say that that A represents half my acceleration, if I double A, that'll tell me what my acceleration is. And so now I can use F equals MA um, to find out what that force is. That force should be fairly comparable to the force that we did uh, using the impulse momentum theorem as well. So there you go. Uh, kind of another quick little video analysis um, using Logger Pro. And we'll see you in the next tutorial.